back to RT Shanty, the respiratory therapist, live out loud. With me, your host, Linda Fry, the asthma lady. Yes, welcome everyone. Welcome to anybody new. Welcome back to RT Shanty. And today's episode is going to be amazing. I have another guest, uh, guest co-host with me here today. And he is very talented. So before I let uh, Bob and Joseph do his thing. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna give a brief. Um, his. I'm going to introduce him through his bio. All right, guys. So hang tight. Hopefully, I don't mess it up. Okay. Uh, so yes. So Marvin Joseph is the president of the startup business MJ Enterprises Respiratory Care Services and the director of respiratory therapy at Meadowbrook Care Center in Freeport, New York. Throughout his 15 year duration in the healthcare industry as both a paramedic and a respiratory therapist, his realization of nearly impossible accessibility to certain respiratory supplies and equipment resulted in the creation of the business. So prior to the director position, Joseph has worked in hospitals, skilled nursing homes and rehabilitation facilities and home care. He holds an associate's degree in applied sciences, a bachelor's of science, and a master's in business administration with a healthcare management concentration. In his spare time, he invests substantial efforts in his compilation music label with an album release on the way. Yes, talented, I told you. All right, so yes, everyone, welcome. Mr. Marvin Joseph. Yay! Welcome, Marvin. Thank you for being our guest co-host on RT Share T. How you feeling today? Thank you for having me, Linda. I appreciate it. I appreciate it very much. Hello, everyone out there. It's a pleasure to be on the show. Thank <laughs> yes, you very much. Marvin. So, okay, Marvin. So pretty much I know your story. So, you know, I, I've been following you on your social media platforms and whatnot. So, but I'm going to give you a chance to, you know, tell your story. And we all have one about how we got into this field. So what attracted you to respiratory, the field of respiratory therapy and just doing this line of work? Uh, well, it was actually a tragic um occurrence in my family that actually uh, awarded, that that actually got me into the field. You know, many people, they look at, they do their research and then they look at what they could possibly be in life. Mm -hmm. But me, I, it wasn't until the passing of my grandmother that I actually uh, yeah. discovered the field of respiratory therapy. Wow. Uh, I was actually going to school for paramedic and, uh, during my time in the program, she had passed. Um, wow, and uh, prior that. to her passing, thank you, thank you. Um, you know, prior to her passing, uh, she was on a ventilator, uh, you know, the device that that we use to help us breathe, right? Or to mm -hmm. breathe for us when we're unconscious, right? Um, mm -hmm. she, she was given a, a sedative to relax her on the ventilator and the doctor had to ask my father if he wanted to, as they say, pull the plug. Right. Because uh, she was not waking up. Mm. Um, so, you know, I didn't know what that was. And I did more research after I graduated from my medic program. And uh, as a medic, I became more and more fascinated by respiratory therapy. So that okay. prompted me to go back to school, you know, once every I finished a program at Long Island University in Brooklyn, mm -hmm. and uh, All the right. rest is history. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I also went to LIU, by the way. <laughs> so yes. Oh. Uh, yes, we know. Uh, very nice. Very nice. We know the same peeps. Okay. <laughs> so yes. Okay. Yes, okay. Are. And so, and 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 so, did you feel like? The paramedic, being a paramedic, did you feel like that was like a good segue into respiratory? Oh, most definitely. Um, okay. Pre-hospital care or paramedicine, um, it's a, 
it's one of the best gateways to a plethora of disciplines within the healthcare field. Yeah, yeah. that makes because sense. You're up on any, yeah, everything you're touching up on anything here, you're, you're basing your knowledge of what you applied in EMS to whatever uh, centered discipline you'd like to focus on. So right. I decided to go with respiratory therapy and uh, it's been taking care of me ever since. Nice. I know. We well fed over here. So, oh, yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, they say that. Uh-huh. No yeah. skinny therapists over here. <laughs> nah, nah, um, nah. So, okay. Okay. So that is, is great to hear your story. So now we are at a time of, oh my gosh. So for those of us who do not know what an RT Panua is, RT Panua is a word that I come up for a respiratory therapist that is, that has their own business that is doing, you know, their side hustles and that were segues from the respiratory fields. And so what made you um, say like, you know what? I can have my own business, you know, what, so talk to us, talk to us about your business and then go, put us through the journey. What led you to say this needs to happen and I can do this? Well, first and foremost, uh, the name of the company is MJ Enterprises Respiratory Care Services, mm -hmm. LLC. Uh, this was founded by me, of course, about three, four years ago. And nice. what started the idea, the idea, it came from my time working in home care. Um, mm -hmm. You know, in home care, it's another monster entirely from yes. the skilled nursing homes and hospitals. I it's know. a whole other ballgame. So yes, it is. <laughs> with the home care, <laughs> with, with home care, it was... Uh, I realized that a lot of people, a lot of patients and families, caretakers, they had a lot of issues when it came to caring for their loved ones, um, seeking medical services. The insurance was always an issue. Um, you know, certain uh, therapies and certain procedures cost a lot. You know, it's not always as affordable as people think, even with insurance. Right. So I decided, you know, let me start up a company where I can not only assist with uh, relatives and uh, patients, but also bridge the gap between doctors, nurse practitioners, and physician assistants. So the the, the company itself is three in one. It's a respiratory consultation. Okay. It's also a durable medical equipment company or a DME for sure. DME. Uh, okay. It's also a uh, trade tube replacement company where I either go to you or you can come to my clinic and we can uh, perform a, a tracheostomy tube change. Nice. Okay. Okay. So you you saw yeah. the need. Definitely, there was a right. a, a gap, and you found you saw the aha like i have the solution for it and you went for it that's right amazing that's right. amazing there are often, you know definitely there are often times when you know we're working as professionals and we don't realize just how hard it is for certain families and uh, patients themselves to not only seek the help that they need but also maintain that help you know right it's right in the cap so, it's another yeah. beast when you go home it's like you know they leave and it's um and like you said it's it's just the co even the coordination alone it's like we're, we're talking about the the money and not just the money just just the coordination the where do you go or it's just it's it's just a lot and um, especially for like um minority families that's what just Definitely. navigating through the system mm -hmm. yes yes yep. yes yes very okay okay good so okay so what were your what, okay so now you're like okay i'm in this space um with um dme and performing consultations at home trade cares we're changing the traits and whatnot what were your uh what if any challenges what were they well um 
the first challenge that I had endured um, was the clientele. You know, people, they view doctors at times as the, the go-to for nearly 80% of their, their needs. So the challenge was convincing uh, my clientele that the um, same procedure that you would normally have done at a, your doctor's clinic is be done at home or clinic. So um, they, of course, build their their MPs, as they should, you know, their PAs, but also um, I work under a, a doctor's license. So right. Right. Uh, whatever the doctor prescribes, you know, that can also be, you know. Joseph, I'm sorry. I think, I think I'm losing you a little bit. Can you repeat? Do you, do you, you got me? I'm clear. You're okay. You're coming back. Yes. Go ahead. I'm good. Okay. Go ahead. Well, I'm not sure how, how much of that you, you, you heard, but, um, I was just letting the. I was just uh, stating that um, the the trust factor between the clientele was mm -hmm. the main challenge. Okay. You know, you know okay. because many of our uh, patients, the patient population, they they steer more towards their doctors and their NPs and and, and their PAs, which they, you know, which they should. But right. also, we as um, health professionals, we work under a physician license. Correct. So as long as the physician is un, is is knowledgeable, as long as they're notified, and they prescribe the that certain therapy right. that the patient needs, Correct. you know that can also be be executed in the home as well as uh, in my clinic as well. So. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. So yes, this is good to know. So just building that clientele, um, you know, based on rapport and that you're able to do this work under a licensed uh, uh, provider. And um, I would imagine you have to have malpractice insurance and all that stuff to cover you, um, yes. uh, you know, and uh, you know, respiratory therapist being cardiopulmonary specialists. I think, you know, some folks, they are really just like, are you, you know, are you the doctor? And it's like, no, I am the respiratory therapist, but under the license and I have a written order and I can do this, you know, in this setting. So, okay. So great. Thank you. That That's, that's really good to know. Um, uh, as far as a business, you know, that you can go in that route if you feel skilled enough to do it. So yes. So, and, and um, I am, I admire the fact that you feel confident enough to do that. Usually like I've, I've been in um, the nursing home facility. Usually it's like, you know, two therapists, if we're going to do a, a trait change, it's a few of us just mm -hmm. in case something right. happens in the facilities where respiratory would do it. And so um, I admire the fact that you do it in patients' homes. <laughs> so right. yeah, definitely a, a, right. a skill. Okay, okay, yes. So, okay, so so for anybody that um that wants to do something like this, or is like, what recommendation would you give to a therapist that's like, uh, um, they have a solution for something uh, and they want to do something new. They want to start their own business and they're on this, they're in the beginning of their journey. What advice would you give them? What I would give them uh, is with every discipline like respiratory therapy, there are subdivisions. There's always, there's always something that is needed, but there isn't uh, much assistance as far as professionals to render that care. So if you find a weak point in uh, respiratory, for example, um, for uh, you can actually do your research and you know study um, business also because that merge of clinical and and, 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 the, and the application of business can, can you know mm -hmm. allow you to steer more towards entrepreneurship. What I realized, um, I'll give you myself as, as an example. Yeah. I realized that, um, again, there was that, that gap when it came to 
getting services re uh, rendered in the home, right. getting that um, accessibility. So people always yes. find there's, there's a lot of issues when it comes to getting accessibility. Yes. I need this, so I need yeah. that service, so I need that therapy. So yes. uh, why can't we get, get it to them? Why can't we as professionals right. do them? You know, what is stopping the clinic, the clinician, that, that, that therapist from, you know, applying that uh, therapy or whatever is needed to that patient in right. their home? Now, yeah. a lot of people, I want to make this clear so everyone understands that COVID has uh, allowed the respiratory mm. therapy field to surface in a way where I mean, mm. we are 100% exposed now. If we were not before, we, we, we are now. We are, so, yeah. Yeah, everyone, oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, oh yeah. So mm -hmm. if there's anyone that would like to start their own business, this I would time. start <laughs> with, this is definitely, yeah, that's, that's right, that's right. I would definitely start with what are the weak points what do you see within the field that you could possibly assist a patient or family with? Right. And then you start from there. Right. Amazing. Definitely. Yes, 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 yes. That is great advice. Um, th this is, this is the season. That's what I've been telling folks. It's, it is, wow. it, especially when, because a, a lot of people in respiratory who are, you know, burnt out, um, you know, thinking of leaving. Um, a lot of a lot of people have not fully explored the profession. They've only gone from acute care. And it's like, you know, which which is a good um baseline or the foundation. You know, we a lot of us start, right. you know, primarily in acute care. And um, and then once they're over acute care, it's like they're ready to leave. And it's like, well, you haven't really explored the other opportunities and you, you do sometimes you have to create your own opportunity and it really is oh, definitely. finding definitely. where you shine. So you see you shine with, you know, the trait changes and trait care and, you know, and I've done that and, and I do it and, you know, it is not my, like, it's not my judge. Like I, I do it. But it's just like not nah. so. But I'm over here in in the asthma corner. So like the 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 asthma education field has been where I shined, and I've been able to have other opportunities on top of that. So that that's what I try to when I when I do these um, RT Panures segments of the podcast of RT Share T. That is the purpose behind it is to show you like you can do this. Like you know it doesn't. Right. Once you have that aha moment and you're confident in your skills and and you keep investing in your skills, you keep, you know, mm -hmm. learning, you're not scared to learn. Absolutely. I mean, the I mean the the opportunities is like it's it's there, it's it's there. You know what I'm saying? So thank you for that. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Um, okay. Oh, so yeah. Marvin, this is your time to plug. What you got going on? <laughs> I know you you do other things. You already spoke about the the music or you know the record label. Yes. So where can we find you? What you doing? What's hot in the streets? What's going on? Let us know. Well, on the respiratory sector, um, I'm on social media. You know, I'm I'm on a Facebook. I'm on mm -hmm. Instagram at MJ Enterprises RCS. That's MJ Enterprises. RCS. Um, I'm also we're gonna on the put music it segment. I'll put it on the description. You know? I'll put it down in the description. Oh, Don't thank worry. Thank you very much. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you so much. Appreciate no it. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Um I I I uh I entered music at a very early stage. Uh I used to play keyboard. Okay. I used to also nice. play guitar. Yeah. Uh can't say that having my son uh caused the pause in that it was just uh there were other opportunities business-wise okay and you know when you find other means to make money you tend to put aside what uh, you know the hobbies that weren't so lucrative right so of course um moving forward yeah moving forward i did want to contribute in another way to music so what i decided to do was create a label a music label 
And nice. uh, I asked myself, how would I make this a bit different from what other labels, you know, are doing? You know, no, no um, disrespect to what they're doing for the industry, but I wanted to um, see how can I give up and coming artists, aspiring artists, uh, you know, uh, a platform. Right. So I decided to create uh, Indigo Stream Entertainment, which is um, a label that focuses solely on on composing songs from many artists from different walks of life, from okay. different genres, ranging from hip hop to Afro beats, even nice. on the international sector. You know, right, right. Um, we have uh, Caribbean artists as well. So. Yeah. For this first album that's coming out, it's called it's called Eclectic Aftermath. Eclectic, Eclectic Aftermath. aftermath. Yeah. Okay. The name of it sounds very difficult because it didn't come from me. <laughs> I'll tell you right now. Uh, it came from one of my from one of my team members. Okay. And I have to say that it it it, it resonates because of the fact that people are eclectic when it comes to music. Right. And I listen to everything. Aftermath, yeah, exactly. So you, you pretty much know. You wouldn't you think. Pretty much know. Right. You, you know what? It wouldn't really surprise me too much to find people listening to everything. Everything. Uh, you know, under, under the, the sun. sun. Because you have genres now that are not so specific. Now right. you have artists that are merging into different other genres. Mm -hmm. So, you know, yeah, yeah. I just decided let's, let's keep up with that. Um, the aftermath uh, wording that term came from uh, the point of the project. Okay. For our first album, it's a compilation of different songs and spoken word, and it focuses on events that have transpired in 2020. So that could yeah. be good, that could be bad, it could right. be different, you know? So as of now, COVID we time. currently have it uh, finalized. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much done. It's just the process of marketing and release now. Nice, nice. Well, Marvin, I mean, you a busy man out here. So, but that's good. It's a good, it's a good busy. It's a good time. Yeah. And then look at, look, look at you now. You're, you're, you're a guest co-host on RT Share Tea and you are sharing the tea. Thank very, you so much. very, very. That is, we are just so happy to have you. And I, I, once again, I, I commend you um, for being, uh, you know, out here and just doing what you do and taking care of people in the minority community in, in that space. And like we said, this is, I always speak up and I'm an advocate for people having access, you know, mm -hmm. it, and this, this is such a, and especially during COVID, it was, it was, it was a hard time for a lot of people and um, just getting yeah. access to things in the healthcare field. And I've, I've seen it myself. So once again, kudos. <laughs> All right, Marvin. Well, yes, we wrapping it up. So yes, thank you again, guys. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Marvin, for being my guest co-host. Remember, we are here every Wednesday on Google Podcasts and wherever you can catch podcasts. And we are on YouTube every Thursday. And remember, guys, to always invest in yourself and to only compete with yesterday's version of you. I'll see you next week.